Honey Boy. Uh huh. Tell, when you bought your first guitar, Honey Boy, and what time was it? Silver Tone. Sears Silver. You ever heard talk of Silver Tone? Sears and Rubber. Sears and Rubber. Oh, about $4. <laughs> oh, what, what year was that? Man, I mean, man, 1929. My daddy bought it for me. Did you tear that one up like I took my first one up? What happened to it? Well, uh, we moved over to Greenwood, and uh, that was around in 31. Uh, me and some more in 32. Walking down the streets. We, I was young, you know, about 14, 15. Walking down the streets with my guitar and mom. We wouldn't. Eating peanuts and on the Christmas day popcorn and drinking a little pop. We were playing three of us on Johnson Street. One of the boys knocked it off under my arm because I had a little car string around my neck with it on my neck. A little car string was wipe a bag with it. And they knocked it off under my arm and broke it, fell on the street. Said, Get that bust all the pieces by chewing up high, just tore all the pieces. Strang one way and the body went the other way. <laughs> you cried like a baby, didn't you? So I didn't get that another guitar good while. So my sister, man, I mean, Played the guitar, and he had an old guitar. And every time he put it down, I'd pick it up. And that's the guitar I left home with with Big Joe William when I was 17, 32. I left home with Joe William. I carried my brother on the guitar away with me. Just stole it. When I brought it back, I get him. I had another one on my shoulder. I come back with two guitars, a piece of one and a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I had a long story about that, man. Long way to that, man. When did you first come up to Chicago, Huh? When did you first come up to Chicago? Uh, 45, the first year I met your father. First year I come to Chicago in 45. Was he just as managed then as he was then? Huh? Was he as terrible then as he became with me? Who, your father? Yeah. Yeah, very nice boy. He always had a big smile, something to laugh about. He was, he was my man, man. Jim and Rogers, always, when, some, when somebody do something wrong, he looked at me and laughed, wank his eye. <laughs> yeah, he was always funny, all the time. He's funny, yeah. Yeah, he was full of devils. Huh? Always could play, though, boy. The boy always could play. No. Yeah, no. always could play. When Jim and Rob were young, he could play. He wasn't playing around, he could play. Hey, how'd it go? Uh huh. You remember when Muddy came up to Chicago? Yeah, Muddy, Muddy come up about. Uh, Muddy, Muddy come up, uh, I think, about the last of 45. Because uh, when me and Jim was messing around there, Muddy come, but Muddy wasn't recording there. Muddy was waiting. Was waiting for Lennon Chess, but he was driving a junk truck for him then. He didn't know Lennon had a, had a recording station. Sunderland carried mud water in there. And uh, when he was waiting for Chess, see, Chess had a junkyard and a studio too, but Muddy didn't know it. In other words, Muddy wasn't looking for the recorder. He was looking for a job, a day job. And, and Sunderland carried him in there, and Chess heard him, and Chess told him, so I heard. The so chest told himself, he said, you're good, so I'm going to make you. He said, you ain't got to get in the truck no more. <laughs> so that's possible true. Son of the son of man didn't lie about nothing for you. That was a long time ago. Oh, yeah, a long time ago. Jimmy come out the arm and he went clean every day. He wasn't doing them, getting a little check every month. You know, from the army, just come out the army. He stayed with the girl there on the uh, on Newberry, right, right behind that hot dog stand there. And I was living in a little hotel down there on 14th Street, 14 and Horses, he told down. Now, it used to be a chicken place there. I know you know where they. Oh, yeah. I know you know where they. When did you meet Alan Lomax? When did y'all do all that? Huh? Alan Lomax. So, when, did, when did you cut for Alan? Oh, I was, that was a long time. That was three years for the uh, Four years. Three years for the end. Now, I recall that I knew back in 42, I was 27 years old, something like that. Where did you cut that? What, where were you at? Where did you record that? Yeah. Clark State, Mississippi. We record out on Kang and Anderson out there, uh, 
the same place where Muddy Water used to live on the plantation, King and Anderson. And uh, Adam, he went out there and rented some part of a school called the Rolling Wall School from the trustee. And we started recording in there about 12 o'clock on a Monday, Monday noon on a Friday, and July the 20th, on a Friday, on July the 20th. And we record, we started 12, recording about 12.30, and before we got through, it come up a big storm that day. I mean, something like a tornado. And we, we had to quit recording in the middle of the session and cut all the stuff loose because so much the thunder and lightning and wind was blowing. We had to cut all the electricity off. And we off about pretty close to an hour before it blowed over. Then we went back, started recording, and got the session over with. I done, well, I was young then. I, anything I think about playing something, everything, and uh I've done 17 numbers for him. 17 cuts for Adam Mac. I don't know. He gave me a $20 bill, man. That's more money I had in my life, man. I, I could live over $20 three weeks, didn't you, Bob? I wish I could, man. <laughs> when did you meet Robert, Robert Johnson? Well when, well, well, when I met Robert, I wasn't looking to meet nobody. I was just uh, hanging around in Greenwood. I, I was raised around Greenwood and Shaw. And uh, I would hang around with Tom McClellan. You ever heard talk of Tom McClellan? Oh, yeah. I'd hang around with Tom McClellan, him and Robert Petty. We would mess around together there, because they was older than I was, too. All them niggas was older than I was, man. And uh, at the time, but it was a pretty good guitar player. There wasn't too much music about guitar and pianos and violas and harps and guitars then, you know. And uh, this Saturday evening, I was walking down John Street, had my little guitar on my shoulder. And... Uh, I walked up on Robert down in there, you near Fullerton Street down there. Big lot there and a little restaurant set off from the lot and the house sitting back in the alley there where I used to go back there and uh, we drank whiskey. Woman used to sell white whiskey called Emma. And Robert standing with the guitar on his shoulder. A woman came down the John Street in front of me. She's about half drunk. Then Mr. says, uh, play me a tarot plan blues. If you play me a tarot plan blues, I'll give you a dime. You know, he played for Nickels and Dimes anyway. He said, Miss, that's my recording like that. I don't, she's about drunk, so I don't care who it is, but she plays, you got a dime coming. <laughs> <laughs> so Robert started playing them tap we were turning all around the street, hard and shivering and going on. She said, I believe that is that man. So that's just like that record. <laughs> Robert, he filled the street full of people and we all got back in the alley with so many people around me I couldn't, I couldn't even get up to him then you know I just stood back you know until I got in to talk to him I'm a little shy as to get up here you know <laughs> I got back in the alley and he kept the crowd there about an hour seeing how to quit getting them nickel down slow down and we started talking some of them seeing out you know how to do and I got told to him I said you Robert Jones he said he said yeah I know they come from Ron Robertsonville up there I know that Oh, Cause he used to be around with Sun House and all of them. And I said, you ever around Tunica, Mississippi? He said, yeah, I'll be the Tunica every other Saturday. And I said, I said, you know a girl that's called Willie Mae Powers? He said, Willie Mae? He said, yeah. He said, that's my girlfriend. I said, that's my first cousin too. And from that then on, we started getting sick talking together, hooked up in the streets right then when I told him she was my cousin. So we started walking by me going to school around there. I know they were little tavern, they were little juke house around there in Greenwood, and I carried them to all the places that I know we'd play for. They'd give us whiskey and niggas and dime. Robert loved whiskey and stuff. So when we, I, I hung with Robert and Robert all the 37 until Christmas, and I left. Then I went to New Orleans and went to Vicksburg, different places, and I come back there until the 18th, he was still there. He was playing for this man at the Three Fork where, where we made this video, and we, he was playing for that man out there. But I used to go out there and mess around with him and, uh, when he first started playing out there for the man. And uh, he played for this man one of the joke about seven or eight months, pretty close. Yeah, about seven or eight months. Because when I come back, he had been playing. Before I left, he had been playing about two months. When I come back in March, he was still playing for him. And uh, what really happened, man, he started going with the man's wife. She was a good-looking woman. Looked like had mesh and had hung down her back. And she had a sister live out in Greenwood, and that's where Robert's rooming out in Greenwood at, uh, over in the part of the town called Baptist Town, across the Southern Railroad over there, in a little 
colored quarter over there. And every Monday she come out to green with the visit her sister, claims she coming to see her sister, but she's out there with Robert, you know, went over in Baptist town. And uh, you know how a small town like that, everybody everybody know each other when they see them in the streets. When it rained out in the country, people couldn't get there to do no work out there. They'd come on up in town and drink some whiskey and beer, you know. And every day they'd, they'd come up in town when it rained, somebody see Robin Hood walking the streets, John Street. They'd go right back out in the country and tell her husband, well, I saw Robin's wife on Johnson Street. I saw him walking down Johnson Street. Well, the man didn't pardon Robert himself. The woman was selling hamburgers and whiskey stuff, give Robert the whiskey, but he gave her the whiskey to give Robert, but she didn't know what she was giving Robert, because Robert loved whiskey. He said, give Robert this half pound of whiskey, you know, because he loved whiskey anyway, you know. And that's what happened. The night that he got poisoned, me and son of boy was, was there, son of boy number two, Rice Miller. We was there. Because his son of boy had been playing on the streets that, that Saturday too. And that night he, he wasn't doing nothing, so he had got drunk, made a pocket, of nickel and dime. He started to come on out there where it would be up all night long. He come on out there. And we were the only two musicians out there that night. Now I know the night he got poor, and I know the day he died. He died on the 17th day of August 1938. 70, on a Wednesday. I, I know a day he died. I was 22 years old. I got good, remember. But I tell you what, a lot of people think because you used to play with the people, you should play like them. I never did. One man I used to play like, and mess around with a little bit. I don't know why I do that. And I didn't like as much the keys he played in, but I, Joe William. He didn't play in nothing but Spanish all the time. He made done all that recording, everything. He, he never done nothing natural, all in Spanish. And how he changed his keys with the caper. Change the tunes I'm talking about. Mm. Not the keys, he changed the tunes. And when you want to play in Spanish, you slide that caper right there, he got a lower sound. Got on, he got a higher sound. He played the same as this song. He made a, a, a thousand records in about with the same key. With the cable. Yeah. He play, he made the nearby the auto known with Son of Ball number one. Yeah. So that's that you don't never go by how a person play the tribe and play in the world. That's that's that goes good sometimes. You never know. And I used to mark and believe it, but I quit I, I tried to get my own style, you know what I'm talking about. That you know, I never did try to step on nobody step too much. But I try to learn enough of somebody's stuff to do some of this if somebody wants me to do it. But I always stayed me. And when I went out in Texas, and I really changed my own style back that around in 50, 51. I changed over a little bit, a lot. Well, hey, here, give me some of that old school stuff. Show me what you're talking about. Take me back to Mississippi. I'm gonna send you somewhere, Arkansas somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I